Hey, welcome to the Dr. Keith Darrow podcast. Today we have with us, I, I, I know I say special guest often, but actually today we not only have a special guest, but we have a dear friend of mine, Morgan Hutchings from Odd Experts. Morgan, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me here. That uh, And it means a lot too. The, the specialist of guests and the friend part. Pretty cool, <laughs> thing. So look, Morgan, we've worked together for, for quite a long time. And what I've really seen is your ability to think outside the box when it comes to hearing healthcare, probably because you're not an audiologist, probably because you're not uh, an HIS, right? So you don't have to you don't have to worry about the day in and day out of working with a patient. You get to think about the bigger picture of growing a practice. But I, I also want to know why. I mean, what? Why did you come into this industry, and and what do you get out of it? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm, I'm very blessed to, to find myself in the position that I that I am. Uh, you know, to your point, I'm not a not an educated man. My my brain is not full of all of the information that so many people um, have, which is a good thing. I mean, there's that saying of the ignorance is bliss. And in my life, the ignorance of, of being an audiologist, the ignorance of being a marketing director has really allowed me to stay in my lane, which is the people. And that has been my obsession from, from day one. Um, I, I went to school, went through, went through school with a communication degree, um, ha- very fortunate to have you know a mother that taught me what good communication looks like. Um, fortunate enough to play on sports teams that had amazing coaches, um, hired coaches, had great mentors. I've had you in my life, Jared in my life. So um, I'm very fortunate to end up where I've actually ended up. But um, getting here, I think I've always had this idea way back in the back of my head that um, you know being remembered. I can't remember the exact quote, but Sandlot. I remember being a kid hating baseball. But that movie, the thing that stuck out to me was that, uh, what does he say that, uh, you know, uh, legends never die. And I can't remember the part before that, but that, that's been my obsession forever is like being remembered. And I know you've heard me say this a million times, which sounds crazy, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I've always had this thought in my head that I want my name on a building. And as far as I know, there's, there's two ways to get that done. You can become rich and powerful enough that you buy the building and you put your name on the building, or you can be influential enough that people decide to stick your name on the side of a building. And at the end of the day, I think through my coaching, the relationships that I build, the influence that I'm trying to have on people through coaching and through uh, my relationships with the teams that I have is that one day to be influential enough that I'm remembered. That That's it at the end of the day is, is my goal is to build uh, enough people up and make enough people successful that when I'm gone, long gone, somewhere down the road, there's a conversation with one of my kids that's something to the effect of, your dad was amazing. And I'm happy he was in my life and I learned so much from him. And I say I'm so fortunate because I, I got a little bit of that in private practice, but now I get a ton of that, you know, through the coaching and allowing, you know, myself to work with people from Hawaii to New York City, all the way to Canada, New Mexico, all across the world. I get to meet, you know, 10x the people now and influence so many more lives. So I, I'm fortunate to find a place that I can stay in my lane, focus on the people, build teams, influence others, and, and help people with their culture and their and their growth. Well, I, I promise to never forget you, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>? deal. <laughs> um, I mean, look, that that's, first off, every time I hear it, I'm moved by it, right? Because Because a lot of people can look forward to what I want to happen tomorrow, but not enough people look forward to that that far in the future, right? They don't really think, they, they certainly don't plan well enough on how to get to that point, how to leave their legacy, which is what I want to talk about. Because you, look, you used the word three times already, coach. And that's a very loose term to use. People don't often say to themselves or look in the mirror and think, I need a coach, yeah. right? So, so I guess you got to define that and how a coach applies in hearing healthcare, and then we can circle back to how that helps people leave their legacy. But I, I need you to define a coach. Yeah, and it, I, it is. You know, you've been in the industry longer than I have, Keith, and you know that in hearing healthcare, audiologist HIS is. You know, I, you were the first one to say. I don't care. You know what your background is, but in hearing healthcare, it's one of those terms that um, you know people almost they turn around, they, they brush their shoulders and say, I don't need that, you know? And, and if you look around, I think that the most successful people in the world, the most successful business in the world, 
they have coaches. And if you're uncomfortable with the word coach, that that's okay. Accountability partner. Um, sometimes I'm a friend, I'm a guide. Um, sometimes I'm a therapist, therapist, you know? Yeah, exactly. I've been there. I've been there for multiple business owners who are on the edge, you know, and ready to fire their whole staff and quit and, and start a pizza shop. And, and that that's my role. And I think the beautiful part about a coach, especially a really a, a good coach that knows the people that they're, they're influencing or that they're guiding is you got to know when to push people. You got to know when to pull people back. You have to know when to encourage. Sometimes you got to know when to yell. Sometimes you got to know when to, to put on your kid gloves and say, you got this. And everybody's different. And at the end of the day, what we're dealing with is humans. You know, if you're a business owner, you're a human first, you have people, you have people problems. They're all humans. You're surrounded by humans. And I believe that humans are simple by, by you know, birth, but complex by choice. It's one of the things that makes life beautiful, humans beautiful, is that we all have choice. We have the autonomy to decide what we like, what we don't like, uh, football teams, you know, uh, uh, things that we want to participate in in work, um, how much I want to give myself into a meeting or a project, whether I want to try my hardest or I want to reject what the business owner is trying to do and go an opposite way. Um, so we're complex by choice. And I think if you can break the business owner down first to just as a human what do you want? What is your legacy? What is your desire? Is it freedom or growth or maybe a little bit of both? What that looks like for you, it becomes so much easier to understand all the people that are also in your business. They're just like you. They're humans as well. So what do they want out of their life? So really, as a coach and any good coach, I think would tell you the first thing you've got to do is understand, you know, the people because everybody is is complex by by choice, but simple in nature. So I guess, I, look, I've never really even thought about it the way you described it. Like, the best, I mean, if we equate, like, what did Michael Jordan want to do? He wanted to make more basket, right? He wanted to make more hoops. What yeah. did Tom Brady want to do? He wanted to win more Super Bowls. But none of that could happen without a coach, right? Yeah. That that even the greats got there through a coach. And, and perhaps sometimes as a business owner, we think too small-minded, like, oh, I just got to make the next basket, right? I got to run the next marketing piece. I've got to just dig myself out of this hole. So what do you see from private practice owners who who just, they might hop on a call with you, they might email with you and they're like, coaching? No, 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 I, I need marketing. I, I need more butts in my seat. And, you know, yeah. how do you get them over that hump to understand to achieve real greatness? You need some help. Yeah. And well, and I, sometimes you need a lot of help, right? We've all heard that saying that it takes a village. And I'm glad you mentioned um, Tom Brady, Tiger Woods, Apple, Microsoft, anybody that you can think of, I believe that is, has achieved a true legacy or a champion of anything. Um, they have multiple coaches, right? Tom had a, a a throwing coach. Tom probably had a scramble out of the pocket coach. He had a read the defense coach. He had a an everything coach. Tiger had a swing coach. Tiger had a mental thought coach. Um, and the same is true for you. So to, to your point, as a business owner, you've got to have multiple coaches sometimes. It's really nice. One of the things that I, I personally love about Odd Experts is Dr. Daryl brings his expertise and his coaching from science, right? Um, and, and the years that you've spent in the field, Jared gets to bring his expertise of marketing. I'm not a marketing guy and I'm not an audiologist. Morgan gets to bring his his human experience and his people problem experience from running one of the highest, actually the highest rated hearing healthcare clinic in the country. I get to bring my experience. And then you have Dr. Dr. Terry Edwards and people like Reese Jones, our trainers, that get to bring in even more experience from boots on the ground. And so the, the thing with a coach is, um, and I say this to everybody, you should only be taking advice from a coach who's done what you're trying to do successfully. So if they've been there, you know, if you're taking advice from somebody in your private practice who doesn't own a private practice, it, it's like, that doesn't make sense to me. Why would Tom Brady listen to somebody about throwing a spiral when they they can't throw a spiral? It just, it's not logical. But, you know, if you are to the point in your business that you're looking for a coach or a friend or a, or a helping point, a guide, an accountability department, or maybe you're looking for marketing, you've got to look at somebody that's done it successfully. And is still doing it. Yeah. Right. Agreed. That's one of the yeah. things that that I often just, all I do is shake my head because I'm just in amazement when somebody says, well, you know, I'm working with this, you know, buying group or I'm working with this manufacturer. And it's like, they don't own clinics. They don't see patients. They don't run mar like, I, I don't know. It, it's just, yeah. it's a weird, it's a weird field we're in. And you've got to be all of those groups and all of those people, they definitely serve a purpose. Don't get me wrong. I think we can agree that if you're intentional, 
with where you're spending your money and where you're spending your time, you might get your cost of goods lowered. You might have your digital vendors tackled and it's a great, great relationship. Um, so if you're intentional and you're spending money for that purpose, that's great. But if you're going to, you know, if I'm Tom Brady and I'm going to the defensive coach saying, throw me, you know, teach me how to throw a better football, it doesn't make sense. If, if you're going to someone that doesn't own a private practice, has never done marketing in a private practice, never spent money on marketing and reaped the ROI and reaped the rewards and can show you the process they followed and are still doing the marketing, why would you, why would you go to that person and say, hey, can you teach me how to be a better salesperson? Um, you, you can't go to that that group of individuals that's never done it and ask them for information or advice on something they don't know about. So that, that's the only thing I would urge you. It doesn't mean you got to leave your groups. It doesn't mean you got to leave your current coach. You just have to be intentional with what you want. And wherever they've had success, follow them on that path. If you're looking for more success, you want differentiating marketing that might make you stick out a little bit more, go to somebody that has differentiated marketing. Um, and the same is true for every every facet of your clinic, whether front desk, back desk, providers, all of it. So, so let me ask you because you do. We already said this. You look at hearing healthcare. You look at audiology differently, which I always appreciate because you come out with stuff, and I'm like, you know, I never thought of it from that perspective. What what do you see? Because there's a lot of opinions out there. What do you see as the number one, or at least the biggest threat in hearing healthcare to private practice, right? Because most people are going to say, oh my God, it's the OTC. I'm pretty <laughs> yeah. sure you have a different answer. I don't know what it is, but. Yeah, you know, on a, on a very high level, the biggest thing that that is facing all of us, because, you know, like it or not, I'm in your industry, I'm with you. Um, I'm, I'm standing beside you. I'm not behind you. I'm not in front of you. I'm beside you. And if you're in private practice, the, the biggest thing we're facing is just a lack of leadership. Um, you see this all the time in, in uh, the NFL. We've seen it in the NBA. Um, you're seeing it, you know, currently in the golf world. Um, lack of leadership is the thing that will destroy any given community the quickest. And I, uh, other than yourself, there's there's a few other names that I don't, maybe they don't want to be mentioned on this video, but I can I can only speak for you. There's a few names in our industry that are speaking out against certain things. And OTC is a factor and, and selling, you know, hearing aids online and Walmart. And of course, you know, that should be a, a part of anybody's thought process as you think what's next for your business. But nobody's out there pushing the pace forward. Nobody's out there leading the field and saying, here's what we should all be collectively doing next. And so I, I, I think of it as a leadership factor. I think of it as who's out there fighting the good fight. Uh, seems like every time I open up my Instagram, I get on YouTube, there's another person there talking about the hearing aids. And if, if you think that the hearing aids are going to separate us, you're wrong. If, if you think that you can get a different widget than somebody else, you're wrong. Um, and, and that's your expertise, Keith. And I've heard, you know, I've listened to the podcast. Obviously, I'm a follower. I, I've heard you mention that a million times. Where Where I focus, you know, when it comes to the leadership in your clinic is nobody is out there pushing the pace and, and sending the message of, how do we lead our own people better? Because you as a business owner, you might be worried about OTC. You might be worried about how do I stay in business? How do I differentiate or dominate my market? If you're worried about your business, you would be irresponsible to think that the people at your front desk aren't also worried. They have CNN. They have the news. They saw uh, President Biden's speech. They have Instagram. They have text messages from their friends saying, are you guys going to be OK? Are you still doing that hearing aid thing? How's that going? Are you guys going to survive the next year? So how do you protect, you know, the people? It's not just all about you. It's not about your legacy, but you're you're in charge of, you know, multiple souls inside of your business and you've got to take care of them as well. So it's leadership in the industry through people like yourself on OTC and how do we differentiate and dominate and stay within private practice and live within our lanes. But there's also got to be somebody out there. And I like to think of myself as this somebody that's talking about the people. Because there are people inside of your practice, doctors, HISs, providers, assistants, front desk, back desk, phones, people that are also going through times of fear, times of need, and they need solid leadership as well. See, that's see, that's such a great point. I, I was recently I, I was recently doing a training, and it was so it was almost fun to me because the owners had a they were they were very intentional. They thought they were being very intentional with, okay, we need you to come in and we need you to train on X, Y, and Z science. Okay, I'll do that. Except, and then maybe I overstepped a little bit into your, you know, because I've watched you enough. 
the entire six hour training really turned into we need a leader. We need to understand why we're doing things. I ended up in front of a team that was just confused. They were worried. They didn't know which direction they were going in. On Monday, the owners told them to do this. And on Thursday, they told them to do that. And they said, you know, we change our policy. And then two days later, we're back to doing it the old way. And it's like, here we are trying to create this movement. But I'm sure you see it in teams where there's there's chaos without leadership that's really rowing the team in the same direction. I would just love for you to elaborate that, elaborate yeah. on that more. Well, and you, I mean, we've been fortunate enough, Keith, to, to travel the country uh, more than a few times, I think a multiple dozen times now. And, and we always start every, every new relationship we have with a coaching client always begins with, with a mindset shift. It's one of the pillars that we have at Odd Experts, marketing, science, mindset, and culture. And, and you're hundred percent right. I mean, as long, as far as you can go back to, to Socrates and the, the philosophers up to, to people like Jim Rohn and, and John Maxwell, we've all heard the saying, if you got to have the right people on the right seat on the bus. And if you think that through these changes of our industry and what's happening around you, you can see something on YouTube and say that that person seems smart. I'm going to change my business and go and do that without getting the buy-in of the, the three, could be three other people in your office, could be 15 other people in your office to say, here's where we're going, the direction, the intention and the vision of the company. Um, you're just, you're, you're guiding lost souls. You know, you're the, you're the shepherd that can't keep control of, of your own sheep. And it really starts with a vision. That's why we start so many of those meetings with a, a mindset training day, because what we're really trying to get down to is as the business owner, you guys have amazing ideas, truly. I, I mean, entrepreneurs are, uh, I wish they, we had even more studies on people like yourself, because you guys have this insane ability to get through tough times, pound right through the things that that, that are the biggest issues, the obstacles in your business. You guys have a terrible uh, natural instinct of taking care of the people that are behind you fantastic at being the first one to blow through the barrier, but there's people behind you in the rubble that are saying, well, what should we do? And, and that's really, you have to begin all of those conversations with the vision. And those mindset days, really at the end of the day, it sounds like you did this successfully in your last training, is you've got to get the vision from the business owners. Once you get the vision and you can help them articulate and understand where they want to be, you can help explain it to the rest of to the team. And then all you're doing is creating the pathway to align it. Because right now you have one business owner that's blowing through that wall and everybody else is saying, well, should we go there too? Or should we stay? Do you want us to come? Do you want? And that good leadership looks like, here's where I'm going. Here's what it's going to look like. Here's the path we're going to follow to get there. And there's going to be obstacles along the way. It's my job to knock those obstacles down. And you guys just keep following right along with where I'm going. And I love those mindset trainings. It's some of my, my favorite trainings that we've ever done with hundreds of, of practices. It, it's so fun to watch that breakthrough. You probably had this. In, in audiology, you guys always talk about the hearing smile. We always have this breakthrough moment where it's like, oh, I didn't know that's what we were doing. I get it now. That's where we're trying to go. Well, that makes sense why last year we changed this thing. That, that makes sense why we're doing this. And the business owner just never slowed themselves down to articulate and explain in a way that the other people around them could understand, this is my vision and this is where I'm trying to go. And we see like it, we see it so often with the business owners of well I I I went out and I I I bought this new equipment so my team could do balance testing or cognitive screenings yeah. but they're not doing it yeah and I sent an email I emailed them and I told them <laughs> that's what we were doing I even had a meeting we had that meeting that one time we ate lunch during the meeting I remember that because we ordered meatball subs and it's like. You know, again, bad leadership, bad communication. And, and the good thing is, the, the the thing that's really truly beautiful about that is as a business owner, a lot of times you are the problem, which also means you're a part of the solution. Okay. And that's the beauty of when when you're in total control of this thing, you're the, the driver of the bus, the captain of your ship, the pilot of your plane, whatever you're comfortable with, you are the one that's in control. So if you're nose bombing that plane, you're a part of the problem, but you're also the one that can recorrect the course and say, here's the vision that I now have. The destination might have changed slightly, and here's where we're going. And the people that are a part of that journey with you are going to be so much more comfortable. They're actually going to be what we call more aligned, which is going to accelerate action or growth. And the more you can align the people behind you, the faster you can go. Right. And so what, I mean, here's my summary, and tell me if I'm correct, right? You can't control 
the things that are outside your purview. You can't control the manufacturers. You can't control OTC. You can't control Facebook. You can't control CNN. But you can control what happens within your practice. But you've got to set a vision. You've got to set a course. And you've got to, you can't just pile people into the bus and say, sit here, 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 and here, and let's go, right? There's so much more to that. So, so while I have you for a few more minutes, if you can peel back that curtain, what, what do private practice owners need to know? What is their next step to get a team aligned? Yeah. The the thing that I, I tell everybody, this is going to sound so elementary, uh, but the thing that everybody needs to take five minutes and do is is a few simple things okay scratch piece of paper pull it out blank sheet pen in hand and write down what your vision is so when you see yourself as a business owner in your in your clinic or your business whatever you do however you make money where you see yourself five years from now 10 years is always a little far for me and next year is a little too short so five years from today where do you see yourself and write it to the best of your ability. Hopefully it's a few sentences long. Don't just write one word. I know how you entrepreneurs are. You guys want to just bullet point it and go write it out. Then I want you to write your core values. What does it mean to you? What are the things that are non-negotiables, the things in your office that if anybody ever broke those, that would be like a fireable offense to you. Um, it probably has to do with your patients. It probably has to do with empathy, those types of things. But again, ar- articulate those and write those out. And then all I want you to do beyond that is I want you to make a list of your people. So let's say you have five employees, you've got two employees, you've got 10 employees. And all I want you to do right next to the the employees is write a G, a W, and a C. And all I want you to do is identify for me, do these employees get it, want it, and have the capacity to do it? So when you look at the vision of your company and you look at the core values, and I look at Keith, and I write out GWC, I'm looking at Keith and saying, okay, the vision of the company is to get to three locations, $3.1 $3.1 million, uh, uh, 10% lesser returns. I want this kind of phone call conversion rate. I've really articulated this amazingly. And my core values are you know, exceptional patient care and empathetic authority and all these things. And then I look at Keith and say, does Keith get that? Have I ever explained that properly to Keith? Does he understand it? Could he say it back to me? Does he have it memorized? Is it a part of his being? Does he want that? Is it a job or a duty that he actually wants to participate in? And then last, does he have the capacity to do whatever his job is inside of that bigger hole. So three locations, $3.1 million, 10% of less returns, phone call conversion rate, treatment rate, all that stuff. Does he have the capacity to do his job or have I overfilled his bucket? And if you can identify as a business owner, the vision of your company, the core values that you have, and and really all you're doing is, is quantifying the level of culture that you have with your team. If you're grading that low, because I want to talk about culture really quickly. If you're writing out, Keith doesn't get it. I've never explained it to him. That's my fault. You're going to take the, the responsibility and say, I've never explained to Keith what the vision is. And then you don't know if he wants it because you've never asked him. And you don't know if he has the capacity for it. You're going to see a very low level of culture. So the first and thing dare I, I say, is, this can not happen over email. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no emails. Yeah. No one minute meetings. Um, But yeah, I would I would articulate those three things. And then I would I would go to work. You know, the next thing I would do is start scheduling my my time with my employees, having amazing meetings that are intentional, have agendas with start times and end times. Um, I would make sure that I have accountability metrics and I would make sure that I have feedback loops that I can give back to my team. I would make sure I have level up programs. And if your head's spinning yet, like I can tell Keith is, and your eyes have rolled into the back of your head, um, reach out to me because that that at the end of the day, what does Morgan do is is all of the above. You know, you have to set the vision. I can't do that for you. But what I can help you do is get your team aligned. I can help you hold your team accountable. I can help you train your team. Uh, I can help. I can help make sure that the team actually understands where the heck you're going with this bus, so that you can identify if you have the right people and the seats on the bus. Um, because just like you, Keith, you, you, so many of you business owners, especially in our industry, you guys went to school to be amazing doctors, amazing providers. Um, they, they didn't teach you guys a heck of a lot of business and they definitely didn't teach you guys a heck of a lot of what good, solid leadership and communication looks like. No, I I can promise you it's not, uh, in a single AUD or HIS programs curriculum to talk about leadership, to talk about people skills that talks about communication, which is why, I mean, you've brought so much to the table, not only for odd experts, but for all of the clinics that we work with. I, I want to ask you something, though, and I'm going to, we can do this live. 
I want you to grade me on this and tell me if I did a decent job because I know you love analogies too. So when I was when I was at my most recent training, I I basically laid out, look, let's talk about the vision. Let's talk about the core values because these things are the bumpers in your bowling lane, right? Because without them, when you bowl, there's a chance you're going to get a gutter, right? That it's going to be a gutter bowl and you're not going to achieve what you want to. But with these you know, with these barriers up, it makes sure that you operate within the boundaries of, is this part of our vision? Is this decision I'm going to make, does it align with our core values? And you've got to operate within that. And if you don't, well, then maybe you don't belong on the bus, right? And the team kind of like uncomfortably laughed. I'm like, hey, look, we'll free your future, right? We'll make sure that you land on your feet and get a great job somewhere else. But we've got to define these bumpers. Otherwise, we're just making decisions without any real rationale. I couldn't, I could not agree more. And that's why, you know, the suggestion there, yeah, fantastic job. The, <laughs> I couldn't agree more because like, like I said, if you can identify those things and articulate them to your team, you took the next step perfectly. All you're saying is if you don't agree with the vision, you can't operate within the core values. Maybe you don't belong because those are the two things that you, you could teach anybody to, to push the buttons in your cycle, the blueprint, the counselor, or whatever you're operating in. That That's not where you're struggling. When, when you look at what's going on in your business, we talk about this all the time, businesses or, or processes or things go wrong in any business for three reasons. It's going to be a lack of process, a lack of recalibration, and a lack of communication. So when you look at the things that are, are going wrong, it, it's not that like they don't know how to push the button in counselor. That, that's going to be the thing that fires you up as a business owner. They didn't finish their chart notes. They didn't click the box. They didn't close out the appointment. That'll be the trigger point for you. But if you have an employee that's doing that time and time and time again, to Keith's point, they don't understand the vision. They're not operating within the core values and they don't understand how they themselves fit into the vision. It might be black and white, crystal clear as a doctor in HIS in the office, how I fit in, because it makes sense. People come in, they have hearing problems. I fix their hearing problems. They go home. Very easy. Anybody can understand that. Front desk person who does a little bit of billing and a little bit of this, and sometimes I post on social media. Sometimes I have to get my business owners dry cleaning for them. Sometimes I have to do this and sometimes I do that. It's not as obvious for them how they fit into that five-year vision. And very quickly, people get lost. They start operating, to your point, outside of those very simple terms, vision and core values. And then you just have constant disagreements. And then it really truly is time to free a person's future. And I love that term because, you know, you and I have had this conversation so many times. There's never been a, never been a person in our offices, any of the businesses that we've operated, that we know for a fact they weren't operating with intention. Um, they, they weren't operating from a, a vision center. They weren't operating from core, va core values. They weren't living in those bumper lanes that we didn't let go. And they didn't live a better, more fulfilled life after the fact. And we weren't more successful once they were gone. And that's why we call it freeing up their future because they're going to go, they might go bag groceries. They might go work at a gas station. They might go be the CEO of their next company but they're going to feel more fulfilled. They're going to have a, a future that is freed up for them to go and find their purpose. And you're going to stop dragging this chain behind you, drop it and allow yourself to run a whole lot quicker. I love it. I love it. What a, what a, right. I knew it. I knew coming into this, that even I was going to come out the other end of this 20 minute conversation, having a better understanding of why having a coach is so important and really understand What's actually holding back private practice, right? It's not the factors you can't control. It's what's within your practice, right? I mean, there's only a small number of us, 12 to 15,000 of us with 42 million people that need our help, right? So there's plenty of patients to go around. It's just a matter of are we aligned? Are we all heading in the same direction that way, our business, and, and you you said it, alignment accelerates action, right? Three most important things, some of our own core values at Odd Experts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I just want to reiterate, you know, the, the two things definitely that stand out to me in our industry. You guys, people like you, Keith, are going to keep fighting the good fight, you know, speaking out against the, the government and the decisions they make that might not be in the best favor of, of private practice. That's your guys' realm. Uh, you're going to see me and some of the team at Odd Experts continue to speak out about leadership because at the end of the day, he's 100 percent right. The, the first and most important thing that you can control 
and that you can take leadership over is right in between your two ears. It's you. It's your own brain and it's your mindset. Every day you go to work and whatever's happening outside of work, it's you as the business owner, the leader, the front desk, the back desk, whoever's watching this video, you're the first one you can control. And if you can control yourself and you can show up motivated and intentional to work, you can help others do the same thing and you can align your team to be just like you. And then on the coaching subject, I just, I can't urge enough because we see it so much in our industry. You probably see it in other industries too, but here we are in our own industry, in our own silo, is that you, you really, you should not be taking advice from someone who hasn't done what you're trying to do successfully. It's just dangerous. You wouldn't, you wouldn't take your car to a mechanic that has never worked on your vehicle. You wouldn't drop your kids off at daycare with someone that's never watched kids before. It's just not a good idea. It's not logical, but you get to a point, you get in certain communities, you get on Facebook, which I hate, and, and you get behind these keyboard warriors and people start fighting for what they believe is right. And a lot of times the people that make the no most noise win, and it doesn't mean that they deserve to win. It doesn't mean that they deserve your time, energy, and money. And all I can urge for everybody to do is do your research. Find a coach that's done it successfully. Find out what they've done, how they've done it, what they've done to get there, and then and then dive in. You know, if it feels like a good fit for you to dive into that, then do it. But uh, don't go with the the first one at the at the top. Uh, so I've learned a lot, including keyboard warrior. That's a new one for me. I love, I love that. the keyboard warriors. Yeah, <laughs> especially in our industry. I don't know what it is with you guys. Like, just is, is that like a boredom thing? I, I, you guys like love Facebook groups. Not you guys. You got kicked out. Look it up. Google it. Right? Seriously. The least stressful job in the United States yeah. is an audiologist. Right? Yeah. So I think that lends to it. Look, I've had I've had people like yourself from outside the industry come in and say things like, I've, I've worked in every medical sector there is, from cardiology to diabetes. This Walking into audiology is like walking into the high school cafeteria. Yeah, it's crazy. And if you're going to get on social media, you know, go there and watch a Dr. Darrow video. Learn something. Make yourself better. Don't go on there and consume content and make yourself miserable. And then get mad at your staff members when they're on Facebook at your front desk at 11 a.m. in the morning. Uh, it's just ridiculous. You know, and that's the fight. I know you love fighting against OTC, talking about what good medical treatment of hearing loss looks like. I love fighting the people problem, man. I, I, there's nothing I love more than you know, an unhealthy unhe business owner that's got people problems. Because boy, do they ever! The first people problem is them. So this leads me to your 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 curveball question, and we're going to end it here. What is your favorite movie? I'm really curious what's going on in that mind and what what you enjoy. Yeah. So the, this has been my answer my whole life, and I, I truly I don't know if I have a, a real uh, definitive answer as to why. But the movie that has always stuck out with me since I was a kid is a, a Western called Tombstone. And I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, but but at the end of the day, um, Doc Holliday is one of the main main characters. And I think it's one of the most uh, beautiful uh, examples of leadership at a very young age. Uh, I watched Westerns and, and G.I. Joes as a kid, not not Disney. So I, I I'm a weirdo. But that movie, since I was eight, nine, ten years old, is the movie that stood out to me the most. Um, because of Doc Holliday's leadership style, um, his brother dies in the movie. It, it's such an emotional movie. And at the end of the day, he's he's fighting for what he believes is right. Um, and, it, and it's just an amazing Western. And I don't know what it is, but those those four guys in that movie um, and, and the way that they they end that movie, I think, is so beautiful. And, um, you know, I, again, it's one of those things that legends never die. And for me in that movie and Doc Holliday, it's one of those those uh, figures that for me, I'll, I'll remember forever. Well, I'm your Huckleberry. Exactly. There you go. I love it. I love it. Morgan, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, learned a ton. I know people watching this are going to really sort of think differently about the way they run their private practice or if, you know, even if they don't own it, the way they operate within their private practice. And you said it already. If you've got questions, if you're intrigued, just find Morgan. He's not that hard to find Morgan at oddexperts.com. You can go to oddexperts.com. This isn't about trying to commercialize anything, but if you want to reach out to him, it's pretty easy to do so and really help develop a vision, help really refine your core values and make sure your team is all operating with intention and, and rowing in the same direction.
Yep. Do you mind if I drop one more nugget, Keith? I just want to see if anybody's watched the video this long. Exactly. Um, Go for it. One of my favorite quotes of all time, I love this right now, I'm on such a kick of it, is um, something to the effect of, um, you can have more than you've got because you can change who you are. And the reverse side of that is unless you change who you are, you'll always have what you got. So as a business owner, when you're frustrated and you're in times of need, you got to realize you're going to stay where you are unless you change who you are. So if anybody's still watching this video, I don't know how long it's been, 20 plus minutes. I don't know if anybody watches videos this long. Um, if you if you email me, Morgan.experts, and say change, uh, I got a special thing for you because I want to see who's watching this video for this long. I love it. Thank you so much, Morgan. Have a great day. Thanks, Keith. See you soon.